We've been, we've been talking about uh, the panel last week, which was on family treatment. And the final question in the panel was, what resources are available outside of the family that may be pivotal in treatment? And so I just want to list some practical examples that have come up in my work through Cal Southern University here in the last, just the last few weeks. Uh, about uh, two months ago uh, was an invitation uh, sent out to uh, Orange County communities. Uh, San Clemente High School put on an event uh, that was organized, grassroots event that was organized by parents um, uh, of teenagers that have either had difficulty with drugs and have survived, but unfortunately, sadly, many of the parents represented there had lost their children. Their children had died owing to uh, uh, drug abuse and uh, intoxication. The, the primary culprit, as I mentioned earlier, uh, is opiate addiction. It's just absolutely epidemic. The featured presenter that evening was the author David Sheff, who's come to uh, considerable uh, acclaim in the last few years. He wrote a book uh, two or three years ago about his son's addiction to methamphetamine. The book was entitled Beautiful Boy. Uh, I remember the book because I saw it every time I went into a Starbucks. There it was. Uh, it was a bestseller. And uh, David Sheff is, is a journalist who writes very well and is able to talk about his personal experience, both his as a parent as well as that of his son in a way that really appeals to both head and heart. I was really impressed by that. He has a book out this year that I'm currently working my way through just simply called Clean, and I recommend both of those books. His book Clean is a really helpful summary of what addiction is in layperson's language. Very, uh, uh, he's, he's definitely done his homework. It's uh, uh, really well researched as well. Um, and. I, and in both books, he's making a plea for community organizations to do what San Clemente High School is doing here in Orange County, namely to get parents involved, families involved in uh, education and outreach in terms of providing support for families, for uh, their kids, uh, through the school system. And not just through the school system, because also there were hospitals represented, medical staff, as well as local congregations. Churches and temples were, were represented there. Um, the, 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 the organization is called the San Clemente Wellness and Prevention um, Organization Club. Um, uh, and you can go online to read about what they're doing, but they're very invested in getting the word out in any way possible. The goal here is, is uh, interesting and radical, and that would be how do you stem the tide of addiction? How do you stop a child from using uh, 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 alcohol or drugs uh, until later? <laughs> Is, is that uh, uh, if, if there's any consistent research in addiction, one of the findings has been is that there's a direct positive linear correlation be between the age at which one first uses alcohol or other drugs and their proneness to addiction. It's just whoosh, like that. Uh, very few people become addicted if they can make it even past 21 without taking substance. There are reasons for that besides just moral reasons for all of us who are parents. We can relate to it on that level. The brain that's developing, if it's, if it's exposed to toxins like alcohol and other drugs, there's a direct stunting of brain development at the time where the brain needs to be developing the frontal cortex, which is the judgment center. There's no time in development that that's developing more rapidly than in adolescence. It's exactly the time that most addicts-to-be begin ingesting substance, and it derails frontal cortex development, and it's a double whammy because without the frontal cortex, there's nothing to put the brakes on the addiction, and the piece of the brain that needs to develop is itself stymied by the drug involvement, and so you end up with this closed system that's dreadful, and so you have horror stories. Um, and so David Chef, this organization in San Clemente, and uh, uh, local psychiatrists and physicians and medical staff that were present, they're making a plea for working with the school system to, uh, actually this is an experiment that's gonna be tried in a couple of local school districts about drug testing. Parents agreeing to their children being drug tested and that, it, that for those that agree that it be not only mandatory but it, that it be executed through the school system. You can imagine the controversies this is gonna bring but the impulse underneath it, it's a pure impulse. It really is a wish to provide um, uh, teeth or barriers to what otherwise is rampant and, and uh, has only ever been the case and is increasing the case in terms of exposure to drugs and alcohol. So these are community-based organizations that operate in support of the family as kind of a cocoon or an, uh, an envelope to help the family deal with uh, the possibilities of their children becoming addicted. I actually sat in this presentation next to a woman and I asked her, I told her who I was, asked her who she was, 
and uh, she had a child in, in this high school, and as far as she knew, her daughter was not yet, uh, uh, had not yet, I think she was a sophomore, hadn't yet taken uh, any drug or alcohol, but she was there because she was scared because you hear all of this, you read all of this. Um, one of the psychiatrists present said that, that every week or so he reads about a half a dozen kids overdosing uh, with opiates and just dying and it's in the newspapers. In fact, he said something interesting. Oftentimes it's not in the newspapers. This is curious to me because of the stigma is that what family wants to draw attention. So if there's a way to keep it out of the news or, 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 or minimize it, uh, no one wants to, uh, it, as painful as it is, it's isolating. Now their child has died owing to this because there is a moral component that people have internalized. We all do. So uh, it's underreported, uh, the deaths. Um, we'll talk about a couple of other uh, resources. Um, just in the last couple of months, Saddleback Community Church, which is a mega church here in Orange County, um, it's come to fame. Their pastor, Rick Warren, uh, published the book, The Purpose Driven Life. Am I getting the title right? Does that sound about right? He was, uh, uh, he's been over, all over the news in the last two years. Unfortunately, his son uh, committed suicide uh, a couple of years ago, and it was owing to mental illness. And I applaud Pastor Rick for, he and his wife, putting on uh, an event that was uh, amazingly well received. It was on, the title was Mental Health in the Church. It brought together all of the parishioners from his congregation, as well as the Catholic Diocese of Orange County was represented with its Archbishop, as well as the National Alliance for Mentally Ill, which is the, the largest uh, uh, organization, lay organization in the, in the United States, drawing together families uh, to provide resources and support for those that have a family member that's suffering from mental illness. And uh, just to give you a sense of the scope of it, there were 3,000 people present in that sanctuary that morning, which was massive to me. And over 30,000 were online following it, and these are people that had enrolled and paid money. Uh, so it was a very active engagement with the curriculum, uh, dialogue all day long, and it was from morning till night. Just as a beginning sense of it, um, uh, of what's possible in terms of, of a church in this case, or, or, or a diocese, or a national organization taking on if insurance at this point is still limited in terms of reimbursing, how is it that, that, uh, that grassroots organizations and individuals within their families can wrest back some kind of control over the fate of their, their family members? And so I'm really inspired by what's available out there. Uh, the, a subtext throughout the mental health of the, and the church presentation was substance abuse because, as I mentioned earlier, co-occurring disorders where substance abuse is coupled with depression or a thought disorder like schizophrenia or bipolar illness is that uh, they're so common as to be almost linked uh, universally is that people are treating their anxiety, self-medicating with, with uh, uh, various drugs, medicating their depression, medicating their attention deficit disorder and so on. So it's hard to separate out mental health issues from substance abuse because they go hand in hand. Um, some local organizations that I'm aware of there's, um, uh, 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 there's what's called the Against the Stream Network uh, uh, up in uh, the Los Angeles area that, that has gotten more and more publicity where they are drawing together spiritual resources. Anybody can walk in the door. Spiritual resources, um, including meditation for those that are in recovery. And they've just, I just got a notification this last week, they've just expanded and they're opening a treatment facility in the Hollywood area that is, uh, again, kind of community-based where it's, they're, 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 uh, they're kind of independent of the 12-step network. They're independent of, of uh, uh, most mental health practitioners. They're really coming more from a spiritual orientation, uh, including mindfulness meditation. And they're, they're having inroads. Um, I've talked about the group that I lead, Recovery for Everyone. It's operating kind of outside of any of these. We have members that come to the group that I lead on Thursday night, members of our group that are very involved in AA and NA very involved in their local congregations, very involved with their medical practitioners in terms of recovery. And so they're, they're, these are popping up. I just moved recently to Orange County and did a fair bit of research to find out what's available. And there's not a lot yet, but it's coming. I think the San Clemente group is an example of it. Groups like Recovery for Everyone is another example of it. There's a perceived need for, that there needs to be more uh, service provided than, than now being reimbursed and made available through traditional medical or insurance reimbursement. I want to mention in closing our master lecture series here at Cal Southern where we have resources coming to bear. Even tomorrow we have a presenter coming in who's going to be presenting on 
addiction, we have at this point archived um, a number of presentations that zero in on addiction and recovery. There are resources available through the university in terms of uh, online those videos as well as coursework that's available, individual courses. We have programs available, as I mentioned, at bachelor's, master's, doctoral level that are addressing. Um, uh, what we're talking about is training people that are um, uh, interested in giving back. We're training family members that have an addicted family member. We have people enrolling in our program that are interested in, uh, uh, we have uh, couples that uh, their, their spouse was deployed in Iraq or Afghanistan, comes back, this is just a, a possible scenario, comes back with post-traumatic stress disorder, begins to self-medicate with alcohol, and soon enough the alcohol takes over. We have family members that are interested in intervening with their family members as well as giving back. And so the goal is beginning to create a, um, some momentum in terms of creating skills that can go out and uh, provide services, whether it's in a VA hospital or in a local church. There's, a, there's another local church that recently called for me to consult. They're developing a lay-based uh, ministry to their members as well as the community addressing addiction writ large. And so it's, it's a good time to be in this field in terms of increasing awareness. And I'm hoping that some of this information uh, helps move in that direction. Thank you for your attention.